in today's video we are once again going to hop into the upcoming pattern let's go ahead and dive into things today and we see a lot of severe weather throughout these model runs uh plenty of bigger storms and the temperature pattern just does not want to solidify into anything too crazy so we will see later on that it is kind of all over the place and it doesn't want to move into a purely warm or cold pattern it's going to be a very sloppy look so let's just move on uh we will see that in a minute I want to take us towards tomorrow afternoon on Monday, June 3rd, already kind of moving quickly into the month of June here. We see kind of some, I would say, widespread isolated thunderstorms. So the area experiencing isolated thunderstorms is very widespread. Uh, and it is far stretching all the way from the plains through the Midwest, the deeper south, all the way to the East Coast. And we talked about this a lot yesterday, but this is very, very summer-like, obviously. Seeing the higher humidity and temperatures increasing the probability of seeing things like this uh, on uh, really just the, a more frequent basis. We're going to see this almost daily. I mean, by the 4th here on Tuesday, uh, we're seeing a lot of the same here. There is a 990 up there in southern Canada with a stretching cold front a little bit. So could see more persistent thunderstorms through these areas. Uh, we also have a thousand and five up there in the Midwest, but we're seeing overall some pretty consistent isolated thunderstorms. Uh, let's move towards Wednesday here on June 5th, and we can see that there is plenty of isolated thunderstorms throughout these deeper south, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and Great Lakes areas, even the northeast there. So again, plenty of areas dealing with these isolated and scattered thunderstorms. So this is becoming a pretty common occurrence in the time of year. Uh, that we're in this should be more common so it makes a lot of sense uh, we also see a couple of stronger lows up here for canada and the great lakes so we see a 986 up there in south central canada and also a 997 over there over the great lakes so two pretty major lows and we're obviously seeing some frontal boundaries connect between these and um, these are bringing about more consistent thunderstorm activity more linear and overall, more far-stretching thunderstorm bands. Uh, you're not seeing the isolated thunderstorms as much along this, as much as you're seeing just purely, uh, just, I would say, uh, widespread thunderstorm activity along these areas is going to be more likely. So that's going to be, again, by midweek Wednesday on the 5th. Uh, here's Thursday the 6th, and a lot of this activity reaches the eastern seaboard. As you can see, the more consistent activity. Even the Gulf states, so we're seeing a line right about here, uh, where we're seeing this very far stretching cold front type feature uh, that is bringing about again the more widespread and consistent thunderstorm activity and i mean outside of this major low and this cold front we are seeing a kind of trifecta of low pressure systems and this is bringing about overall low pressure and higher chance of thunderstorms in general for these areas we can tell we're not taking a look at the temperature pattern yet but we do see ridging overall for the west here um, so pay attention to the lines, we'll follow them, but the jet stream is moving along these lines, so it's doing something, uh, even like this, it's going pretty inverted up here for Canada, so you are seeing this push of warm air up the east coast and then back up into Canada, and we're seeing a very inverted trough here, pushing cold air from central Canada eastward into the Great Lakes and the northeast and mid-Atlantic, uh, very, very odd and extreme, uh, I would say jet stream pattern there. Friday here on June 7th, we see that a lot of those major bands have moved offshore. We do still see some isolated and scattered about activity here for eastern Canada, as well as the northeastern United States. That is still occurring there. Uh, we're seeing the mid-Atlantic and northeast especially seeing these impacts. We do have a 999 there over southern New England, alongside this 989 uh, low pressure system that is still over eastern Canada. So these are both working together here to bring um, some pretty strong impacts there. Saturday here on June 8th, we see some thunderstorms across the central states. So for the plains here, some of the Rockies, and then some of the Midwest, uh, we are seeing some thunderstorms fire up. Not a whole lot of low pressure to work with, but that's just an area that these models are picking up on here for Saturday on the 8th. Still, the Great Lakes in the Northeast are seeing this activity as we still have some pretty major low pressure uh, taking place over eastern Canada. So everything underneath there is bringing about thunderstorm activity. Very interesting as this has been a slow moving system, obviously, uh, as we're taking a look. Uh, by sat Sunday here on June 9th, we see that this area of thunderstorms across the central states is expanding and becoming overall more widespread, I would say, and more impactful. So it is going to definitely be something to watch over time. Uh, also, for areas in the upper Midwest, as well as the Northeast, we're seeing some isolated and scattered about activity by this point. Again, Sunday on the 9th. Here's Monday the 10th. 
Um, we actually see another kind of push of cold air from the north here. So we're seeing kind of this look. And this is bringing these thunderstorms further and further south. Still, you're looking at the southern Rockies, the southern plains, and then the deeper south kind of Gulf states there up into the southeast. So that has been a multi-day occurrence. I would say that there is going to be opportunities for severe weather within that, of course. As we see this cold air dip, just like we saw maybe a month or two ago, we will see this kind of area be the bullseye for severe weather. Your more Dixie Alley kind of classic, or not classic tornado alley, that Dixie Alley uh area it is it is pretty classic in its own uh sense but it isn't the classic valley the classic kind of original tornado valley if you will or tornado alley better yet is going to be this area right here uh, obviously the central plains uh whereas the dixie alley is going to be this deeper south area and that's going to be more of the past 10 to 20 years where we've seen this activity shift primarily into this area of course, they've always seen tornadoes, they've always seen severe weather, but it's become a lot more prominent in here. So we've seen these areas on the uptick and these areas here overall on the downtick. Not this year, though. This this classic alley has been the area for tornadoes um, overall, but in obviously the past 10 or 20 years, mostly this one with the up arrow in here, the Dixie Alley, has been the primary area for tornadoes. We see Tuesday looks also bad for this kind of Dixie Alley area all the way up through actually into the southern mid-Atlantic, I'd say. Uh, we're seeing thunderstorms in here. So Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, and even up into southern Virginia, perhaps. We are seeing thunderstorms prevail within this area. As this cold air continues its push from the north, we've seen cold springs a lot over the past 10 springs. Warm winters followed by colder springs. It's very, it's a bummer overall. <laughs> Um, but I think that the cold air from the north helps to push this severe weather further and further south, uh, and that is why we've seen a lot of this over recent years. Uh, let's take a look at the total precipitation, and we can see that obviously these kind of central plains areas do see a lot of thunderstorms act th thunderstorm activity throughout the this model run, uh, but also this Dixie Alley area we are seeing quite a bit of activity in here, and that's a big big trend. Here on this model run also the midwest through the great lakes and into the northeast as well as another hot spot area as well as the northwest here which has been a very active area over the past um, couple of months and you know of course the winter time so very active in there total snowfall is actually increased from our previous few days uh, we do see quite a bit here for washington state up through uh western canada and also for the rockies we're still seeing quite a bit as well uh, in that pocket so multiple inches expected for the higher elevations in those two mountain ranges very interesting temperature pattern let's just dive through it again very sloppy so we see some colder air some warmer air uh we see this it looks like we're almost warming up in the east here by wednesday the fifth but look at this we get this cold shot that moves right in and wants to stay stationary but try to find anything really consistent about this i'd say warm in the west might be the most consistent feature here uh, but we get these warm-ups in the east with other cooldowns moving through. Uh, it's very, very hard to distinguish. I think we're going to be in a roller coaster pattern. And what I mean by that is one day might be 75, the next day might be 89, and then, you know, 79 the next day, and then 85 the day after. Uh, it's going to be all over the place. You're not just going to see 85, 86, you know, 89, then back down to 85. It's not going to be staying within a couple of degrees. Uh, it's going to be jumping across the board for most areas here, at least over the next 10 to 15 days. Uh, so, yes, very, very all over the place roller coaster pattern. Here's the Storm Prediction Center. I just want to move through it quickly. Lighter greens are your general thunderstorm risk areas, and that's where we expect general thunderstorms. But, of course, these forecasts can be off by a little bit. Uh, they can't even be flat out wrong. So you definitely want to heed every watch, warning, and advisory still as any thunderstorm can be dangerous, of course. Your darker green areas are your level one marginal risk, and that is where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. Your yellow areas there across the central plains is gonna be your level two slight risk, where we expect scattered about severe weather to occur. And then your orange area there for Colorado, Nebraska, and Kansas, that is gonna be your level three enhanced risk, where we expect a little bit more widespread activity to occur. That is for today on Sunday, June 2nd, keep in mind. But also uh, for day two, we have a general thunderstorm risk area and a marginal risk area within there. So a little bit of a break, but there is some dangerous potential in there. It's just not too elevated for tomorrow on Monday, June 3rd. Here's day three, which will be Tuesday, June 4th. And you can see we're taking a little bit of a lull here, Monday and Tuesday, another general thunderstorm risk area and then marginal risk area but nothing much more to speak of. So definitely slowing down a little bit here. Not to say that dangerous uh, weather won't occur, 
uh, but it's definitely less elevated. I do expect things to pick back up over the coming days, though, following this, so keep that in mind. Anyway, we do upload every single day, so be sure to subscribe for those daily uploads. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload, so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.